guys, it's me, Lumix C, and today I'm here with... As always, your boy, Return to Sender. And today we're going to be playing Tron 9, which is... It's kind of like a deck builder, but opposite. Um, the, the description states you start with a certain amount of cards and you use them throughout the game. And, and who do we have to thank for this? Um, yeah, this is a game by Damon L. Wicks. No, thank you, Mr. Damon. Or yeah. L. Wicks, as I prefer. Wicks. Wicks? Uh, Wicks, yes. Wicks. And let's get into it. So, Nine... No, what's up? Oh, no, no, go ahead. Let's, let's do this. Nine years have you studied in the Arcane Tower. Nine times have you progressed to a new art and a higher floor. But today, you stand in the plain stone courtyard, the shadow of the tower pointing you towards the great outer gates. The Grand Warlock stands before you, a stack of enchanted cards in his wrinkled hand. Draw nine, he says, holding them towards you. Roll credits. <laughs> You draw three steeds, servants of man, three spiders, weavers of chaos, and three serpents, agents of death. The mm. enchantments woven into these cards will serve you well over the course of your journey. Okay. Your journey. You step through the oaken gates, never to return. Okay, <laughs> just, just Goodbye, adding. Goodbye, family. <laughs> I have stepped through the magical portal that I always knew was here to sweep me away to Hogwarts, except instead of going to a witchcraft and wizarding school, I, an old man handed me a deck of cards and <laughs> sent me on my way. There's a time when all acolytes must make their way into the world. This time is yours. You carry no provisions, no possessions. All you oh, have... Jesus. <laughs> no clothing. Uh all you, well, no. All you have are the robes upon your back, so yes, clothing. Aww. And the nine cards in your hand. Three steeds, three spiders, three serpents. Got it. Ro the road to the arcane tower is seldom used. The earth is scored with the marks of merchants' cartwheels, but the only footprints are your own. Is that scored, or is that supposed to be scarred? Scored. It, it means, like, it kind of means the same thing, like, when you have marks on something. Yeah, but I, I would think that score would be synonymous with, like, a tally of some kind. No, like, when you score marks into something, I don't know if it can be used as a verb, actually, but it, it can be used to describe things in that way. Mm. Alright. Uh, the forest here is dark and overgrown. You would fear bandits were you not, s bandits were you not so certain that you are utterly alone. Uh, after several hours of walking, you notice trails of smoke on the horizon, the mark of a small settlement. You have at least a chance of a roof over your head tonight, though after your years in the tower, you're not sure whether or not you would welcome the company of the people with whom you would have to share it. As if in response to your misgivings, an old beggar bursts from the undergrowth. <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. Uh, his breath is foul, his beard unkempt. He clutches at your robes, babbling incoherently. He wants a coin, just one solitary copper would do. Just enough to buy some soup. Can I can I do the voices? <laughs> sure, you're welcome oh, to. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, please. I, I just I just need a little little, little coin. You you mind you have a copper to spare, ma'am. I just I just need something to buy me some, some good old fashioned soup to go with my grilled cheese here. Please. <laughs> Please, ma'am. Just, just a sport. Just, just a sport of copper. Just enough to get me through the day. You know, us working stiffs. We, we don't have much on us, but we, we just give us a coin. Uh, his vast pupils and mushroom-stained teeth. That's weirdly specific. Oh, that was right. He is. He is of the British Isles. <laughs> suggests that it is not really soup he is after. What, like? Mushroom yeah, he's scratch the drug? He's, he's scratching his uh, neck. However, this does not much matter to you as you have no coins to offer. You only have the cards. Are you going to <laughs> kill a motherfucker? <laughs> servant, a servant of man, uh, agent uh, well, of chaos, and agent of death. Yeah, that was it. Thank you. Um, 
I mean, I'm not going to be a dick about it. Well, he's... Oh, okay. So you do not believe what the beggar has said to you. You can see plainly enough that he is in dire need. You draw the card of the steed and perform the incantation. The beggar stumbles back in surprise as a stream of clouds pours from the heavens, taking the form of a sturdy white horse. Okay, so that's pretty literal. It is a steed fit for a king, though you suspect most monarchs would be a little put off by the blank, glowing eyes. The beggar hesitates before approaching you, but when he realizes that the horse is for him, he weeps with gratitude. Oh, it's so good, this horse. This is not what I asked for, but I'll take it. <laughs> As you help him onto the creature's back, you notice I'll that he, ha he has no shoes and the soles of his feet are torn. With unnatural speed, the horse carries him away to, to the arcane tower. There he will have a warm welcome and perhaps in time a home. Yeah, I just want to say thanks. Oh, okay, we'll leave. Goodbye. <laughs> Eight cards remain. You continue on your way. Kill the next one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You make your way through the forest in peace, contemplating the path before you. Eight cards remain. You wish to use them well, but if you are to do so, you cannot afford to squander their power. You hope the beggar remembers your kindness, and remembers to pass it on in turn. Oh, is this a choice here? You come to a yeah. signpost directing you to the nearby town. It is not a large place, though no doubt it will have an inn, a good meal, and a warm bed. You are confident that others of your order must have stopped here their first night. At the very least, you are certain that to continue along the forest path would mean a night in the open. Hmm. Let's, let's uh, risk it for the biscuit. Uh, Alright. You use the final hours of the day to press on with your journey. The town vanishes beyond the horizon behind you, as gradually the sun slips below the horizon ahead. You come upon a shrine by the wayside, and decide to take shelter beneath its roof. You offer a brief prayer to whatever spirit the shrine serves, asking forgiveness for your intrusion. However, as you cross the threshold, you realize your prayer is futile. This place has been defiled. Sheets of skin, scraps of clothing, splinters of bone litter the floor. In the long light of the doorway, you see a merchant's crate of jars broken open. In the long light of the doorway, yellow eyes meet your own. You stumble back as the creature charges. Upon reaching the doorway, it shies back, its skin cracking in the sunlight. But the light is fading, orange, dim, and your foe shrugs off its burning rays. It steps from the shrine, claws twitching, strings of gore dangling from its tusks. The sun will not save you, but it does allow you to see the cards. Yes! Well, do we want to do death or chaos? Death. I mean, I, 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 it's your choice. I, I, that's just a vibe I get. Uh, you draw the card of the serpent and perform the incantation. A viper lifts itself from the road, jaws gaping, head swaying in threat. The tusked creature growls, making a clumsy grab at the snake's head with its vast hand, and is stung for its foolishness. The creature stares at the twin pinpricks just behind its thumb, baffled at the blood. Then, without a sound, it keels over, its eyes clouded before it even hits the ground. This creature will claim no more travelers, and its body will be assigned to the keepers of the road to scour the trees for any brethren it may have brought with it. Seven cards remain. You continue on your way, seeking a place to sleep. Um, I do want to say, I don't think I mentioned, the, the cards you get at the beginning of the game are randomly chosen each time you play. Oh! Yes. That's cool. Yeah, so I'm assuming there are others as well. Yeah, because I kind of thought that the, the the chaos one and the death one seem pretty, almost a little too similar to each other. I assume chaos can just mean that something neither good nor bad happens, but... Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll, we'll see when we use it. Uh, you wrap your robe tightly around yourself and curl up in a sheltered spot between the roots of a great oak. It may not be as comfortable as your bed in the arcane tower, but you're glad to have something solid at your back. You use two cards today, the beggar on the road, the monster in the shrine. You hope that their enchantments were well spent. As you drift off to sleep, the deck in your hand feels worryingly slim. The light of dawn reveals the path once more. 
Your journey is long. The road leads beyond the lands that are merely unfamiliar to you. As a student of the tower and into lands that are unfamiliar to all, the rolling wilderness that is home to only beasts and brigands. You pass a few merchants. What's the difference? <laughs> hey, Lamau. Um, you pass a few merchants as you walk. Those with full carts try to trade with you. Those with empty okay. carts <laughs> merely nod in greeting. Okay. <laughs> the farther you press on, the fewer you meet. At first, this is a matter of only casual interest. However, as days pass by, it becomes deeply troubling to you. You have no food, and the land is bare. Far before you, though not far from the road, lies a humble cottage. Far to one side, perched atop a hill, there is a formidable tower. The wood smoke from the former and the splendor of the latter leave you confident that there will be food in both. However, you know not what else waits for you in either. I'm feeling pretty adventurous. Oh, yeah, I was gonna actually agree with you, but for a slightly different reason. Oh. If okay. regular if regular folk are fleeing with their carts, that would suggest to me that the cottage may not be all that it seems or in some kind of trouble because I don't think these people are coming from the tower. This I'm assuming that the, the bad stuff is happening around here. Or at the very mm -hmm. least, if it's not happening here, the tower is safe from whatever they're fleeing from. <clears throat> well, let's see what's in the tower. That's long. You make your way toward the tower. Its presence is imposing, it is far taller than you anticipated, and night falls before you reach its gates. You pass by other buildings as you approach, feel cobbled streets beneath your boots, but there are no lights in any windows save for those of the tower. The place smells of rot and damp. You knock upon the door and are greeted by a portly man robed in garments of fine silk. He Yo. beams to see you. Our guest! He cries. Please warm yourself at my hearth. It has been long indeed since any traveler has come with tales to share. You spend a pleasant hour by the fire, regaling him with tales of your own tower as you sample the best from his stocks of cheese and wine. Still, you cannot help but feel that something is amiss. The homes outside were abandoned. It is not merely travelers who seem to shun this place. You remark that it is strange to be waited upon by a nobleman rather than his servants. You cannot see your host's face beyond the harsh glow of the fire, but you sense that it is darkened. That's slightly racist. Mm. I... I... Sorry. I had servants once. He says. And tenants, too. David tenants, to be exact. But when time grew hard, they began to envy what I'd earned. They grew ungrateful for what I provided. I lied. <laughs> he stands, and despite the fire, you feel a chill. His figure in the shadows seems taller, leaner, his footsteps like a cat's. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just going to enjoy this nice saucer of milk as we converse. <laughs> they walled me in here, that I might know their hunger. They left me to die, but though my bones might rest oh, here, my snap. spirit cannot. You lift a burning brand from the fire, but its light does no more than confirm your darkest fears. The nobleman stares back with dull eyes, sunken in their sockets. His lips have been nibbled away, piece by piece, by the very teeth they once concealed. I oh, know. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was so enraptured for a second there. <laughs> Cheese and wine cannot sustain me. Breeze, the ghoul as he approaches. Mm, what they lure in meat enough. Oh, now let me let me get a quick nibble. <laughs> oh no, it's cool, ghoul. <laughs> Lamau. <laughs> uh, let's try the chaos one. We haven't tried that yet. Chaos is twitching. Yeah, go for it. You draw the card of the spider, but the creature is upon you before you can begin the incantation. You died. Um, it uh. knows this magic. You yourself have told it of the arcane tower, and it will not so easily let you wield this advantage. 
It seizes your wrist, your shoulder, straining to bring its teeth towards your throat. It does not yield even as you drive a thumb into its eye. But as oh, my <laughs> eye. <laughs> but at last the words come to you, and with them ten thousand tiny bo- Oh, I don't like this description. Ten thousand tiny bodies spilling from the folds of your cloak. The spider- oh, you're producing them. Yeah. The spiderlings trace peculiar paths along the fabric, leaving holy sigils in trails of silk. Oh, these are holy spires. <laughs> the ghoul snatches back its hands, the putrid skin crumbling like ash from its bones. It cannot touch you now. You begin a search of the tower. The creature before you is but a hideous puppet. Its true form lies... sepultured? Somewhere else within. I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, but mm-hmm. it stops you with a word. How oh, long? long? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm rude. treading on you your territory. You were trying to talk over me. <laughs> How long would this last? Oh, wait. No, fire me. I read that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Third word in. How long will that last? It demands pacing in the shadows. And how long will those fine threads hold? Cruel though it might be, your foe is right. The silken sigils that protect you are as frail as they are potent. They grant you an escape and nothing more. You leave the tower, the ghoul's wet laughter ringing in your ears. (laughs) Perhaps the next passerby will be another acolyte, swifter of mind and sounder of heat. Okay, that's a bit of a weird phrase. Uh, more capable of cleansing its evil from that place, but perhaps not. Perhaps only a hungry merchant as unsuspecting as you. Six cards remain. You continue on your way. I, I will say, uh, I wonder what would have happened if you give him a horse to snack on. <laughs> oh, but I'm not gonna do that. That's mean. We're horsey. Uh, Sounder of Heat, do you remember... I don't know if you've seen it. There's there's like a meme of like a documentary about how they managed to get some kind of like not not like how they were receiving some kind of like weird frequency from the sun when they were recording it and they figured out like what the sun vaguely sounds like. Oh yeah, like the sound of the um god, what is it called? When when it like emits those bursts. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think of. <laughs> It just the emits the low, the low, the low booming static. Just uh, you pass by empty windows and through abandoned streets. This place is no longer a mystery, merely a monument to hatred and greed. The mm. deck feels thin in your hand, in a way it didn't when you approached this place. Strange to think what a difference one slim card can make. You like to think that you can have an influence on this land. That when you pass through places such as this, you might at least have a chance of making old wrongs right. Your thoughts are interrupted by the scent of a salt breeze. Your journey has taken you to the shore. Ah, you we walk fast. From maps and charts entrusted to the arcane tower, you know that this is not truly the sea. It is merely the mouth of a great river. This bank is home to a city port where goods are taken from far inland and shipped to foreign countries far across the waves. Your destiny, however, lies on the far side. You could surely barter your way onto some ship or other if you were to venture into the port, or you could continue on foot through the wilderness to a place upstream where the river has been bridged. Either route is likely to cost you a card. Your magic is all you have to pay your way within the city and all you have to shield you without. Let's, let's keep walking. It's a road less travel. It is a long walk to the bridge, requiring many days traveled. Fortunately, the route is not as lawless as it was in the days when the, <clears throat> when the tower's maps were drawn. The local lord has placed a heavy tax on goods traveling by water, and many of the merchants are taking to this road to avoid it. You pass through the worst of the wildlands in the company of others' armed guards and are not accosted. However, when you near the far side of the bridge, you are alone and not so lucky. A figure, face concealed behind a heavy scarf, steps out from a pillar, hefting a mace with sharpened flanges. 
You announced that you were an acolyte of the Arcane Tower. You would no more carry coin than you would drag behind you an idol of gold. The man laughs. <laughs> the coin I'll get for you is the hand of another. As he lunges forward, you realize yeah. his mistake. <laughs> he is no mere highwayman, but an assassin. Oh shit, the plot uh, thickens. I put the ass in assassin. Um, let's use well, chaos again. I, I don't feel uh, like this deserves to be directly. I, I don't know if he's, he's trying to kill you. Yeah, but he's technically just doing his job. What do you mean he's doing his job? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. How I have, I, how could I? You know. By the way, uh, is there a union for assassins? You know, can I just? Yeah, is there is there any way I could sign up for that? You know, just the the, the benefits are just really hard to come by in this right, industry. Right. But <laughs> you draw the card of the spider and recite the incantation. However, your Ooh. assailant strikes before you can finish, hurling oh. a heavy parchment pouch at the ground in front of you. With a blinding flash, it erupts into a cloud of smoke, and the last few words of your spell are replaced by coughing. Mouth and nose protected by his thick scarf, the assassin strides through the smoke as you stumble back. He raises his mace and you grapple for it, the struggle sending the two of you crashing into the railing of the bridge. He quickly regains control of the weapon, shoving you aside, but this proves to be a blessing in disguise. You tumble off the bridge and into the river, though the card of the spider slips from your fingers as you instinctively snatch for a handhold on the bridge's side. So would you just lose whatever card you took here? For this particular encounter, it seems that is the way of things. Unwilling or unable to swim after you, the assassin can only shout a string of oaths as the current carries you swiftly away. You hope that the two of you will not meet again, though it seems a cruel thing to wish for. If you do not, it will almost certainly be because he is pursuing some other victim on behalf of some other paymaster. Five cards remain. You continue on your journey. Let me get some more comments of uh, how slim the deck is getting. To be fair, it's only there's only nine cards. Yeah, it's true. So like, even using one would make a noticeable difference, I guess. As you turn off the road served by... Served by the bridge and into the wildlands once more, you begin to wonder who might have sent the assassin in wait for you. Until you began this journey, the Arcane Tower was your world. You can barely remember the days before your studies. None there would wish you harm. Except for the person who gave you the card! Or so you thought! Uh, you consider that you might have made an enemy since you set out, but this line of thought takes you no closer to determining who that might be. Oh, uh, it's definitely the guy, the, the, the guy the you give a horse to. Pissed. Nope, no, the guy you give the horse to. Oh. He's like, oh yeah, they got, they got, they got stuff. Maybe. But there is yet one other possibility. Your foe might yet lie ahead. You mm. shudder, and not just because of your damp robes. It is Ooh. possible that you have attracted the ire of some other skilled in sorcery. It is possible that, through pool or crystal, they mark your progress even now. You find yourself at the edge of a thick forest. Whoops. Extra thick. A trail winds through the forest. This, you sense, leads towards your destiny. However, the place is dark and foreboding. No bird call from the no birds call from the treetops, and no squirrels bark from overhead. There is a shadow over this place. Yeah, bark is, bark? <laughs> bark is a strange word to describe the sound that squirrels make. Nuts! I love nuts! However, the only other uh, route is a long track around the forest. To travel that way would take days unless you can secure transport, and after your last your latest misadventure, you suspect you may face fewer foes beneath the trees. You mm. watch the clouds pass by as you ponder your choice. Forest trail or earthen track. If you take the forest trail, you should, I mean, you probably just can use the horse and be on your merry way. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> You feel a chill as you step into the shadow of the trees. You know only a little magic by heart. Your studies at the tower were no more than a foundation for your knowledge, and for the time being, you must bear your spells on cards. But even you can recognize the malice in this place. The trees watch your approach. The earth listens to your footfalls. Each stone and leaf is a sentry, and so it is not long before you are confronted. So, they have sent a mercenary. 
calls a voice from nearby. One who knows an art like mine. You turn to find a woman standing at the edge of the clearing. There are leaves in her hair and a knife in her hand. You try to explain yourself, but she will not let you. Do you know whose coin you work for? Did they tell you that? My only crime was to possess those same powers you now wield against me. The plague I called down on the day of my banishment will seem a mercy compared to their punishment for this hypocrisy. With a deft motion of her hand, she calls forth a magic you know all too well. A hundred serpents emerge from the ground, eyes gleaming with an ethereal flame. They crawl towards you. Uh, I'm outie. Uh, no way, oh boy. <laughs> You draw the card of the steed and quickly mutter the incantation. A glowing white horse gallops through the forest towards you, heedless of the serpents. By the time you climb onto its back, they are almost upon you. A cobra snaps at your ankle as your steed begins to run. Go on, cries the witch. Warn your paymasters that I am coming. It will not save them. Let them spend their last days in fear. Doubtless some misdeed has been committed here, and of course the forest has been blighted by her madness, but your destiny lies elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, she, she had a snake bite a horse. Misdeed <laughs> indeed. Four cards remain. At the edge of the forest, your steed stops and will go no farther. Though, you continue though, on foot. Though, as we discussed beforehand... Oh, by the way, he just stopped. The horse didn't die from the snake bite. It no, the it, horse didn't, got it didn't tired. get bit. It didn't get bit. Oh, you did you or did the horse? I no, thought the horse did. The cobra like like just missed your foot as you climbed. Oh, uh, 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 okay. I I misunderstood that. Also, uh, as we've discussed previously, mm -hmm. uh, horses. Uh, it's surprising that you made it out of there using the horse option because, as we've discussed previously, horses are very fragile. <laughs> Fragile, yes. They have a tendency to put themselves in positions that would end up in their untimely demise. To be fair, it is a magic horse. Yes, but how how intelligent is the magic horse compared <laughs> to a regular horse, you know? The only thing that a magic horse knew is that it needed to have you get on and then just to do whatever you said after. I guess we'll never know. As the tree line shrinks away behind you, you consider that so too have your cards. Of the nine you drew in that simple stone courtyard, only four remain. No matter how many miles you have yet to travel on your journey, you have passed the halfway point. So your here's the question. So here's the question. Mm -hmm. Which card are you going to save for the last? That is the question, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like I feel like the way this is progressing, there doesn't appear to be like, oh, you chose like a card that probably would not be super good, so you die. It feels more like it's just leading you to do like you might die in the very end. But the question is, if there's a final confrontation of some kind, are you gonna want are you are you gonna be cool with having the horse or the spider or would you wish to have the serpent? I mean, I'm less approaching this as what card do I want to have in the end, because I have no idea where this is going to end up, and just more what feels appropriate for the given situation. I, I'm fully expecting some kind of last encounter. Oh, no, for sure. Like some big bad, and I don't think the, the spiders seem temporary, and the horse definitely doesn't seem like the way to go about it, unless it's like, well... Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's my, that's my destiny gone. I'm just that's gonna go ride. live elsewhere. I'm, um, I'm a head out. <laughs> Alright. Your journey it's... is a long one. The forest fades first from the horizon and then from your memory. You feel less an acolyte of the tower who set out to travel than a traveler who happened once to study there. When the last card is consumed, it will be as if you never set foot in that place at all. The land around you is barren and cold. Hunger has become a constant companion. The road you have been following, paved but seldom traveled, turns to match the course of a river. There's a foul stench to it, and you surmise that there must be a great city upstream. Perhaps there you could trade your arcane skills for the provisions that you need. However, to venture through the gates may draw the attention of your unseen foe. 
a wooden bridge before you leads off into the Badlands. All right. Scary. Okay. Yeah. So your options are to go into, quote, a great city where your enemies will likely see you. Or your other option is to the go to a place lands. that's just literally called the Badlands. Uh, hmm. Yeah, neither of these seem like great choices. I know what I would pick, but I'm going to stop influencing you because I feel like this is your... Is your 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 go around? I kind of want to see what the Badlands are about. It sounds like a terrible time, but I'm curious. You cross the bridge, only hoping that the dusty plains before you are not as empty as they look. Unfortunately, they are not. No more than two hours travel beyond the river. You are startled to hear the sound of heavy hooves behind you. Six bandits on horseback quickly circle you, armed with Bows and bolas. <clears throat> all right. Give us all you have. Says their leader. And leave with your life. One of his companions laughs. I don't know if I want to waste my last of the other two just yet. So you're going to kill him. I mean, you were mad at me for not killing the assassin. I feel like six bandits. He was... I feel like six bandits are more dangerous than but a single assassin. She... Here's 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 the only thing I will say. We've only seen one snake pop out of the card, and I feel like you're gonna yeah. you're going into you're going into the badlands. You're gonna need the snakes. Yeah, but when the witch used it, a bunch popped up, right? I mean, it's it's also situational. It's, it's also very likely that it's another spell that you didn't get in this run through, or it's a variation of a spell, or maybe even slightly more likely. Oh, okay. <laughs> Keeping your hand out of sight, for there are now so few cards that you are certain of their order in the deck, you select the card of the serpent and whisper its incantation. No sooner than the last word is spoken, a great serpent bursts from the ground. Okay, not a lot, just a big one. Yep. Its eyes aflame. The bandit's horse startle, and their leader, closest to the creature when it emerged, is thrown and killed. At least two others are dragged from their steeds as they attempt to flee. The serpent moves across the ground with speed far swifter than a horse. You know not how many escape with their lives, but you are certain the travelers here need fear them no more. Yeah, see, I feel like assassins at least only target specific people when they are, um, like, given a job. Yeah, Bandits, so now... It, like, target it, anybody. If, if you run... Yeah, that's great and all, but if you run into the assassin, and then immediately after the big bad, I feel like you'll wish you had saved those two snake cards. Well, I guess we'll see. So far, you've killed a bandit leader and a couple of his lackeys and... And a big old monster. And a big old monster that was at the shrine. Three cards remain. You continue on your journey. You spread the last few cards before you, noting how worn the edges have become. Few things can rob them of their enchantments, but simple wear and tear is indeed among their number. Really? <laughs> hmm. You You've must, had so few. You must do what you can to preserve them. This is a cruel place, and these cards are your sole advantage over the brutes and beasts that dwell in it. Before you lies only the wasteland. The barren land stretches on before you, but there is a strange energy brewing in the air. Throughout your journey, no matter what path you chose to walk, something has pulled you in this direction. But now you are drawn not merely in this direction, but towards a particular place, somewhere over the horizon. Fate calls to you, deeply uncertain and utterly inevitable. A ruined temple lies cracked and broken in the distance, but this is not the place you seek. Indeed, it has an evil aura. The gods it honored are long gone, and in their place lurks something vile and corrupted. However, the only route that would escape the notice of the, of the watcher in the temple is through a deep gorge, and there is no telling what lies within. Oh, Let's is there some deal with it? it well, I was going to say, is there something in the gorge? Is that something that was calling to you in the gorge? No, it's it's it's, it's not in the temple. The no, but the gorge is the way to it. So, well, no, I mean, it's up to you. Also, do you pronounce it route or route? 
I know technically you can do both, but I think I've been switching back and forth between. I'm the sure two. I switch back and forth, so I don't know. Root. I feel like I say route more than. No, I probably say both. Anyway, yeah. Ruin Temple it is. Ruin Temple. You approach the temple, judging it wiser to face its horrors head-on than risk an ambush while skirting its grounds. But the guardian of the corrupted temple does not lie in ambush. An armored figure, a full four cubits in height, shambles forth to greet you. It drags a sword of bronze behind it, and its form is wreathed with flies. In life, I was a saint. <laughs> A plus choice right there. Announces the figure. In death, a martyr. My name was honored throughout all time until one such as you <laughs> struck it from these stones and with profane magic <laughs> bade me guard my own defiled tomb. It raises its sword above its shoulder, taking up the battle stance of a long-forgotten time. End my suffering, or suffer for your predecessor's crimes. Alright, so I guess this is the big choice. Chaos or death? Which do we save for last? Or just get the horse to kick it to death. <laughs> I'm sure horse just means you decide to f to relieve the situation. Yeah. It's not possible that the horse could be used to kick it to death. Like we, it's versatile. It's not just used for you to leave situations. It's also, I mean, technically the spiders can do the same thing. And we've only so what have we seen the spiders do? We've seen them constrict. They didn't constrict. Uh, they they. The webs they like put on our robes were holy, so it uh, protected us from the ghoul, and then we lost one that, in the river. That's right. We didn't actually see if there were multiple uses for that. So yeah. far, the snake has seemed pretty straightforward. The horse has seemed like it has some variability. I, I, I'm, my thing is, I think in order to fulfill this thing's true desire and hopefully get something out of this, you have to use the snake, but that means you don't have the snake anymore. <sighs> The other two would... I don't even know what they would do. That's up I, to you. I feel like the Chaos one is, like, buy yourself some time. To do what? To leave? No, but just in general, like, that's what the card does. Hmm. He, he wants an end, and... The other two could possibly do it, but this is the only surefire way. Yeah. You draw the card of the Serpent and read out the incantation. The armored saint strides forward, sword poised to strike, but it pauses at a sound from behind. One of the pillars of its temple breaks free of its foundation, swaying where it stands. With reptilian grace, it falls to the ground and slithers towards the saint, its form that of a great stone serpent. Oh. A blow from the bronze greatsword strikes off shards of stone, but your summoned servant is undeterred. It seizes the corrupted saint in its coils, the armor buckling like parchment, and the bones within crumbling to dust. Do not mourn me, <laughs> breathes the revenant. I wish to be forgotten. As the helmet yields beneath the serpent's grasp, uh, <laughs> the temple shudders to the ground. Let's look good stuff. <laughs> only ruins of a ruin remain, and only clouds cast their shadow across its ground. Goodbye. Are you done? I'm leaving now, for <laughs> real this time. Two cards remain, you continue on your journey. I'm, I'm immediately regretting not convincing you hard enough to not use it against the bandits. Well, it'd be like that sometimes. We'll I'd see rather what have happens. two serpents going into this than I not. I know, but look, we'll see what happens. Someone chose to defile that place, someone with a knowledge of the occult and the skill to bend its forces to their will. You fear your destiny, destiny may have less to do with finding a place for yourself and more with ending some terrible influence over this land. Ending. Okay, alright, listen. Ending. Your journey's end is near. 
There's a city on the horizon, but it is not a city of the living. No smoke rises from its rooftops, and as daylight fades, no torches shine upon its walls. It is a dead and ancient place, whose people perhaps once paid tribute to their gods at the temple you have left behind. As you walk the dusty road, your frayed robes catching on the dry scrub pushing through the stones, you come to notice cart tracks passing the same way, not yet swept over by wind and sand. Soon you come across the cart. It rests abandoned where it stands, its wheels unbroken, and its good untouched. Goods Run. untouched. Run. Cries a voice from nearby. You look around and see a figure clinging to the highest branches of a long dead tree. His face is pale and his robes streaked with blood. Leave me be. Bring help. He calls again. The beast is still here. It is only then that you notice the horse's legs twitching beyond the cart, the entrails strewn across the ground. A great clawed paw sinks into the bloodied sand as the beast slinks into view, abandoning its meal to investigate your scent upon the air. It walks upon all fours, its frame like a lion, but its tail is that of a porpentine? And its head is that of a man, bearing both beard and mane. What is a porpentine? Is that an actual animal? Uh, hold on, let me look it up. I'm looking it up too. I, I'm assuming this is supposed to be like a sphinx type creature. And stand by for Porpentine. Uh, Porpentine is a new media artist, according to Google. Nice. Oh, it's it's like a porcupine. Is it just another word for porcupine? Hmm. Porpentine is archaic porcupine, while porcupine is any of several rodents covered with quills. Okay, huh. yeah, it's it's a synonym for porcupine, essentially. Cool. You learn something new every day. Uh, it's very porky. Its eyes fixed upon you, the creature laughs, a great gob of horse flesh <laughs> falling from its maw. It oh, sorry. It surges forward, grinning with three rows of teeth. Um, sorry, my mom told me not to laugh when I have food in my I was, mouth. I was gonna say, it's awfully rude to laugh with your mouth full. But I'm going to ref refresh you with your tender flesh. Um, let's, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, you gotta leave the code for it, dude? Listen! <laughs> This is why you saved death. Well, okay, you're telling me I should save it for the end. If I had used my one death here, I still wouldn't have that's one fine. for the end. That's fine. That's fine. You know, I don't know what the end is, but this, again, going into the Badlands. You draw the card of the steed and recite its incantation. Though the creature before you is born of magic, it is blind to the flames that engulf the card and deaf to the words that call forth its power. The manticore's threat lies in base... Base claw and sinew, and so your ritual does nothing to dissuade it from approaching. A shimmering white horse appears before you, but you have no chance to climb upon its back before the manticore makes its lunge. All your steed can do is step between you and the beast, tooth against tooth and hoof against claw. You call to the cart driver to climb down as you flee, for this distraction should serve him as well as you. Oh no, poor horsey. Mm -hmm. But he makes no move to do so. Whether too tired, too badly wounded, or simply too afraid to make a break for it, he prefers to trust that you will send help than that his legs will carry him to safety. Yeah, I was kind of expecting that you'd just kill him. <laughs> you have no time to tell him how many days, how many miles it has been since you have seen another soul. Yeah, he's dead. Yep. One card remains. You continue towards the city. You exchange the near gloom of the wasteland for the darkness of the ruined city. On any other night, you would be thankful for the shelter of its walls, might seek a room with roof intact where you could spend the night. But this night, you cannot sleep. Your destiny is near. In this dead city where no lights shine, you see an orange flicker in a doorway far ahead. You climb a marble stairway flanked by statues, but gods or kings you cannot say. This place, temple or palace, has lain abandoned for so long that perhaps none now remember. You step inside. There, cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by the opulence of ancient times, sits a figure by a simple fire, a figure robed in the garb of your own order. 
Kom, says the figure, gesturing to a place opposite her. Sit. You take it, for the night is cold and the fire pleasant. Like you, I studied at the tower, she explains. Like you, I drew nine cards. Like you, I set out from those gates. But unlike you, you know force called me onwards. Instead, I fled something that followed behind. She produces a small orb of crystal, which glints with more than mere firelight. Well, I, I watched your progress from the day you set forth. I saw you use the card of the steed against the beggar when you began your first day on the road, and I saw you meet the troll in the shrine as that day ended. She pauses. There's so much you wish to know. Why your journey called you here, and why she waited for you. Hmm. Well, that's all relevant questions. I know which one I'm more interested in. I, I feel like the first one kind of encapsulate <laughs> English words. I feel like the first one kind of includes the second one. Mm. She shrugs. Because this could end no other way. Nine floors in the tower, nine cards in your hand, nine trials on the journey. No. There was only ever one test, one judge. I was yours, and you are mine. The fire pops and spits. Around the room, stone eyes stare blankly, unseeing and uncaring. I have used my cards. Explains the other acolyte. Oops, that's a different person. No, it's the same person. Oh, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, there, I assume that meant that someone else was in the room. I was the one who set the assassin before you, having won his favor with the card of the serpent. I raised... wait. Serpent? You would have killed him. Hmm. I guess you could have threatened him with them. Oh. I, I raised the temple guardian to keep you from this place. The manticore was my work also, its flesh woven by the spider. What? A oh. spider can make a fucking manticore? That's not, we, we never found out that these things have multiple I'm uses. I'm kinda glad I saved the spider for last, not gonna lie. Yeah, but what do you- I, I, how fast could it be? She laughs briefly. <laughs> That's the laugh I'm going with. Mm -hmm. But you should know that not all my magic was employed in hindering your progress. I too had to call the steed to save me from the witch who dwells in the dark forest. There's a, there's silence for a moment. Every card I drew in that stone courtyard is gone now, but one of yours remains. Tell me, did you save that card deliberately, or was it merely the one you... Happen not to use. I mean, it's a bit of both, though, isn't it? Uh, I mean... I feel like I saved it deliberately, deliberately more than I just happened not to use it, because I was, we were trying to be mindful of keeping a good one for the end. But well, also, it, I was it, dealing with things as they came. If it were up to me, I would be able to say confidently... Because I would have tried to save the serpent that I yeah. saved it deliberately. I, I feel like I saved it mostly deliberately. Mostly. She laughs. That is wise of you. There's a pause. Tell me. She continues eventually. Will you use it now? Ooh, I can do nothing. I'm gonna use I it. I this lady feel like a bitch. you definitely have to, right? Oh. The spider. Observes the other acolyte. Very well. Let us see what fate has in store. You recite the incantation. A spider, ever so small, descends from the ceiling to her shoulder. She does not even notice as it bites her just below the ear. She falls without Ow. a sound. The end. Wow. See, yeah, because chaos is such a broad thing. So I, yeah. I, I was relatively sure it would be altered to fit the situation, and if that necessitated someone dying... Wait, does that mean you take over the position now? 
I don't know. It's a bit of an ambiguous ending. I really I like th that, she, though. She, I will say, if we did do another playthrough, I'm curious to see what doing nothing in the end means, because she didn't have any cards, or she claimed not to have any. Mm -hmm. um, game by Damon L. Wakes. Yeah, as we said. Artwork by Joe Wright. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Wright. The cards were really pretty. I did love the art for them. Uh, special thanks to the following people. Uh, well, yes, don't don't be shy now. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. If I had to guess, if I were giving me for the butchering, Salavier, Nelson Jr., Felicity Drake, everyone from the intro comp. comp 2018, without whom this game would most likely not exist. Bit like and that is... Can... Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, that is a fancy looking font for the word title. <laughs> Jeez. Um, bit longer than I expected, especially because it is an in-browser game. It's not something I had to download, so I was expecting it to be a bit shorter. Granted, yeah. if I had played it on my own and not been reading it out loud, it probably would have been a lot faster. Yeah, I'm sure me doing the voices and screwing <laughs> up occasionally would also have fed things up a bit. But I think overall, for what it was, I, I enjoyed it. I feel like I feel like if I, just to kind of get this out of the way, if I had one criticism, it would be that I feel like, you know, it, especially for a lot of these games that aren't, you know particularly expansive or in this particular genre where they're text-based even just like uh, a simple image on screen kind of depicting where you are or the like the kind of choices that you have ahead mm. would have been nice but i mean aside from that i really like the visuals on the cards i like the different scenarios you were put through they were i would say simple but effective um i liked you know, from the beginning, I kind of had the vibe that we would need to sort of whittle our way down the cards. I, I honestly thought that if they had given us the option to do nothing earlier, I I honestly would have thought that using up all our cards would have left us in, like, the end game sort of situation screwed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to see what it looks like on another playthrough, but, I mean, I feel like we got a pretty good look at things as they are. No, I, I agree. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, as I mentioned when we played Siberia, I always really enjoy kind of text-based or narration-based mm. adventures with like the branching paths and choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The story was really interesting. Um, the ending was curious. I, I feel like you can... Um, depending on the choices you make, maybe get a bit more information about that to draw a more solid conclusion. I definitely would be interested, I think, in maybe replaying this one or two more times, like, on my own. Um, I'm I'm convinced you became the the, the woman you, that you was You did it waiting. for the one after you. Yeah, maybe it's just, like, a repeating cycle. Definitely but, a possibility. So that begs the question, what happens if you do nothing? That's honestly the one question that I really want to know. I feel like she would probably kill you, or maybe she'd let but you. She leave. doesn't have any. But unless she's lying, well, there are she other doesn't ways have any to cards. kill people. <laughs> well, I know the game is based around these cards, but there are other ways to do things. I, I mean, you know, obviously the the the, the choices clearly defied some of my expectations, but I will say that given. Given the fact that she seemed to also be a student of the tower and that they don't really seem to have any marketable skills aside from using magic, assuming that she was being truthful and that she didn't have any more magic, I, I'm curious to see how that would have resulted. Sure, you could have died in the end, and that would have been a bit... Uh, I don't want to say anticlimactic, because, I mean, well, that was your whole journey. Mm-hmm. You don't even know what the point of your whole journey was, per se, aside from the fact that you you had to do this. Or, you know, it could, it could have been more explicitly said at the beginning. I could be forgetting. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, I'd be, I'd be interested in playing this another 
time, maybe two, to see some of the other options and the other endings if we want to maybe revisit this maybe in another video, maybe in our own time. Um, either way, like I said, I really enjoyed this. Um, I thought the story was fascinating. Like, there's there's just enough left out that it, it really leaves you curious um, mm -hmm. and kind of allows you to draw your own conclusions. Uh, and I really encourage anyone watching this who, if you enjoyed yeah. watching this, to go try it for yourself because there are, yeah. as you saw, plenty of different options yeah. and different endings. Uh, even if we don't say it, as with all the games that we're definitely going to go through, please uh, go and check it out for yourself, especially as we are only two people here. You know, we would love to go through every single game and 100% it, but unfortunately that's just not realistic on our end. Plus, you know, we shouldn't be a market substitute for going out and checking the real thing if you have that interest for yourself. So definitely go, and if you have that interest, uh, you know, check out the game. That is Draw 9, and, you know, see what other cards you get and, uh, you know, what other paths you can take. Actually, that is a relevant question. Do we know what some of the other cards we can get are? Or uh, I have no we... idea. If we want to restart real quick and see maybe one of the, what yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, other yeah, cards yeah. are. Yeah, why not? Let's do that real quick. Give, get a little taste. Draw, Draw 9. Interesting. Whoa. It's the same. I thought it was no, randomized. Two, two, two steeds, four spiders, three circles. Oh, the number is randomized. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I want my playthrough with just nine serpents. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that was my misunderstanding. I thought there were different cards, but it's uh, the amount of each you get that is mm. randomized, which okay. is still really interesting because it still gives you plenty oh, of different yeah, options. Oh, no. yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just saying, though, I want that nine serpent <laughs> run. I, I think... Or at the very least... I, I was going to say, I, I think you have to have a minimum of one of each, I would guess. But maybe not. Okay, fine. Wrong. Okay, fine. One, one for one for the other two. That's totally fine. But I would keep refreshing the page <laughs> until I got serpents. one, one, and seven serpents, and just get rid of the first two pretty much immediately. <laughs> and just kill, kill everyone. everyone. I mean, otherwise, you just have a bunch of ste. Uh, uh, like you can't even really predict what the spiders are gonna do. But you just have a bunch of horses either galloping away or getting wrecked. <laughs> that, um, that's basically that role to play, unfortunately. Yeah, I was so sad that that one horse died. I'm unsurprised. There were so many situations where your horse, you either get away or the horse is sacrificed and so you can live. Yeah. But that's that's cool. I. I mean, like, if they ever released, uh, like, a sort of sequel or spiritual successor to this, I would love to see some more cards. And, mm -hmm. like, kind of how we unfortunately misread, but uh, we uh, initially went into this thinking that there were going to be uh, other variations of cards when you play through. I would love to see that kind of variation just to kind of get a, a bit more of that replayability because absolutely I would love to go through and see what happens when I draw, you know, the fool or, you know, they don't have to be necessarily like tarot based, uh, but you know, something along those lines, which speaking of tarot, I'm surprised <laughs> to not really come up as a, as somebody who has dabbled uh, into uh, a bit of, you know, tarot cards yourself. What, I mean, can you, is there anything, there any parallels to kind of draw with this or? I mean, if I were to compare this to these type, these cards to anything, it wouldn't be tarot. It would probably be like an Oracle deck of some kind. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't particularly see any, I guess the steed could be kind of synonymous with like the chariot card. Um, hmm. but the other two, not really any symbolism in the tarot deck that I'm aware of. Is it because the horsey pulls the chariot? Pretty much, yeah, and the chariot is Noid. also kind of about, like, moving movement. <laughs> it would, in this game, it would be, instead of servants of man, chariot, servant of wheel! <laughs> Oh, that was really cool. Um, it was very cool. We kind of got a little off topic towards the end there. Yeah, uh, fine, apologies though. for our rambling. 
But yeah, so that was Draw 9. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. As we have already said, definitely check this game out if it interests you. And we'll see you all in the next one. Bye! Take care, y'all.